Hello everybody! Welcome to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH. And today we will be discussing product costing, absorption versus variable costing. At the end of the video, you should be able to differentiate absorption costing against variable costing, explain the rationale of the use of variable costing in managerial planning and control, differentiate inventory valuation under absorption costing against variable costing, prepare an income statement under absorption costing and variable costing, and reconcile absorption costing net income and variable costing net income. This is your management accounting trainer, Kevin Troitsua. Before anything else, please like, share, and subscribe to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and hit the notification bell button to alert you of the latest video lessons. Comment down your questions, suggestions, and reactions. And I would like to thank my 30 thousand subscribers for trusting Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH as your online learning partner. I didn't expect po na dadami tayo ng ganito at uh, patuloy pa po na mas marami pang nagtitiwala sa Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH. Thank you guys. You are all so wonderful. Thank you for all the love and support that you're giving me and thank you again very much for trusting me in your online accounting lessons and I hope po that this serves uh, it's um, yung kanyang purpose no? at its fullest para po sa inyo. Maraming salamat. Actually, my featured subscriber here is Miss Jidget Ann Laurito. She's a grade 12 ABM student from STI College, Caloocan. She's actually my ambassadress. No? She promotes my channel very well. Pag siya po ang nag-share ng channel ko, like mga 200 likes agad yan and 70 shares. <laughs> so, grabe. No? Um, she has been with me since day one. Talagang super support po siya. So, Jidget, I'm uh, shouting you out here. <laughs> no, So, thank you very much for your support for Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH. And again, sa lahat po ng 30,000 subscribers and counting na nagtitiwala po sa Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH, you have all the love and respect from me. And I hope that uh, nakakatulong po ng mainam ang videos ng Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH sa inyo pong online learning ngayon pong COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, hindi ko po ina-expect na dadami tayo ng ganito kasi this was just created for fun <laughs> nung una. Tapos, uh, tinry ko lang talaga, no? Pero marami naman ding tumangkilik at nagpapasalamat po ako sa inyo sa lahat po ng gumagamit. Sana marami kayo natututunan sa akin. Okay? So, yun po. Thank you very much po for trusting again and again Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH as your online learning partner. Okay, so let's now move on to our lesson for this session. In our previous discussion, we've discussed cost concepts, classifications, and cost behavior. So, dyan na po natin na-discuss yung different kinds of cost. Depende po kung paano siya ginagamit ng manager in managerial decision making. Kasama na rin po nung ating variable cost, fixed cost, mixed cost, step, step cost, at uh, paano din po mag-separate ng ating mixed cost using high-low method, scatter gram, st scatter diagram, at saka po ng ating least square regression method. So, we will now be integrating your learning of cost behaviors with this lesson, which is the comparison or the usage of absorption costing versus variable costing. And that is our lesson for this session. Okay, so let's start po. Income and performance evaluation. One of the tools for performance evaluation is the assessment of the entity's financial performance, which is income. So, ang pinaka tinitignan, hindi naman sa pinaka tinitignan, no, pero isa po sa mga tinitignan na performance evaluation or tool for performance evaluation is kung kumikita po ba yung company o hindi no lalo na po ang company na talagang itinayo para syempre naman ikumita e syempre ano po ba ang ating magiging measurement ng kanyang performance syempre financial performance under sa mga uh, accounting subjects niyo di ba financial performance income kumikita po ba o hindi no so one of the tools that you can use in performance evaluation is knowing if the entity is earning or not, right? So, income is used as a measurement of performance both in the totality of an entity, 
no uh, talagang like for example ito pong nasa ating uh, example dito sa gilid which is the financial statements of Jollibee Foods Corporation so yan po yung kanilang net income noong 2019 6 million 400,000 no pwede pong by totality yung pagtingin natin ng performance ng company or if you're a manager deciding for something on how to improve your department then you can also use income measurement as a determination if your department is doing good or not Diba? So, pwede po siyang by totality of an entity or by reporting segments or departments. And as you all know, ang management accounting po ay ginagamit po natin yung flexibility ng reports niya para po uh, ma-serve niya yung needs natin for decision making. Okay? So, now, uh, with those uh, concepts at hand, this now poses a question. How should income be correctly measured by an entity? Sige, let's say for example, okay, marunong ka, revenue minus expenses, okay, that's it. How do you get the revenues? How do you get those expenses? Okay, you know that for a fact na, actually. No, but the question is, how should it be properly measured? And when can you say that you're really earning? And when can you say that you should still improve your performance? Okay, so we will in this lesson, we will be presenting you some techniques para malaman kung talaga bang kumikita yung company or not and what are the considerations that we should um, uh, we should think about lalo na po kapag ka ipapasok na natin yung konsepto ng variable and fixed cost. Okay. Cost information provided by cost accounting, as you all know, is a vital information used by the management in order for them to determine how much a product or service cost them. Magkano ba ginagastos natin para tayo ay makapagbenta nitong mga produktong to? So basically, cost, cost information will be provided to you by cost accounting. Paulit-ulit na tayo dyan, no, since lesson 1. To be able to generate target income, costs and expenses that are matched against revenues should be clearly determined. No? Ang madali po kasi ang revenue. No? Um, you just have to multiply the number of units that you sold, kung ilang po yung nabenta nyo nitong period na to, just compare it with the selling price. Although we have a separate um, in, uh, sorry, accounting standard regarding revenue, which is uh, revenue from contracts from customers, which is PFRS 15. But uh, it, it teaches you there anything about everything about revenue and the related contracts and that. But basically, mas madali kasi siya eh, no? Basta kumita ang company, yun na yun eh, di ba? Revenue. Mas madali siya, unlike sa ating costs and expenses, talagang iisa-isahin mo. No? So, to be able to generate target income, no? Ano po ba yung talagang mga ginagastos natin na ima-minus natin sa revenue para malaman natin kung kumiti, kumikita ba tayo o hindi, no? Baka mas malaki yung gastos natin kaysa sa kinikita natin. Medyo delikado yun, di ba? At ayaw nating mangyari yun. Kaya nga tayo nagko-cost management. So, going back to the basic goal of cost management, cost should be properly managed and regulated to achieve higher profits. Lalo na po sa mga companies na ang strategy ay cost leadership. Di ba po? Talagang kailangan ang cost ng isang company ay well regulated and controlled para po mas mababa ang cost, mas malaki po ang ating net income. Which is, all companies naman siguro yun ang gustong mangyari talaga. Di ba? So, um, cost is a really vital information for you to understand kung kumikita ba talaga tayo o hindi. Okay? So, yun po yung ating pag-uusapan sa session na ito. Mga tungkol dyan sa mga bagay na yan. Okay. The preceding insights, lahat po ng sinabi ko sa inyo sa ating introductory slides, hindi pa pala ako nag-uumpisa, no? <laughs> now brings the call for product costing procedures to be utilized for the proper evaluation of financial performance, which is also known as your net earnings. Okay, kumikita po ba tayo or hindi? Okay, so I will now be presenting you two product costing methods that you can use or a manager can use in order for the manager to properly decide kung kumikita ba talaga sila or hindi. No? We have absorption costing and we have variable costing. So our whole discussion until the end of this session will just be comparing kung ano po ba ang absorption costing at kung ano po ba ang variable costing and allow me to present them to you one by one. Let's first discuss about absorption costing. Yung nakikita nyo po sa left side ng, it, ng ating slides dito, 
ay uh, familiar, hindi po ba? Sales minus cost of goods sold, gross profit, less operating expenses, net income. Ganyan po kayo mag-compute ng net income sa dalawang taon nyo na pong pag-aaral ng accounting, hindi po ba? No? Sabi nga po sa mga under ni Professor Oliveros dyan eh, di ba? Yung mga financial statements that we are learning for two years is just actually a part of what management accounting uses, hindi po ba? So, Ganun po yung nangyayari. Dalawang taon nating inaral ang financial accounting only to find out that it is only a small portion of what managers use uh, in decision making. No? At uh, those reports generated by financial accounting will be used in management accounting. At nasanay na po kayo dyan sa net income na yan. No? So, ganito po. No? Ano po ba tong absorption costing at ang dami kong intro? Okay. It's also known as the full costing method. It's used in presenting income information to external users of accounting information. Basically, ang absorption costing po ay yung kinasanayan po nating income statement at kung magkano po kayo mag-compute ng cost of goods sold and operating expenses. Yun po ang absorption costing. It is the income statement that is in conformity with the generally accepted accounting principles. Huwag nyo nalitihin yung sarili nyo. Pag sinabing absorption costing, yun na yun. <laughs> yun na yun. Kung ano yung nakasanayan yung income statement at kung paano po kayo mag-costing uh, ng products, yun po talaga yun. Okay? Now, to give you a more insight about it, ganito po siya, all direct materials, direct labor, variable manufacturing overhead, and fixed manufacturing overhead forms part of the cost of the product. So, you know that for a fact, no? Direct materials, labor, and overhead, both variable and fixed, yun po ang cost ng product. And lahat po ng variable and fixed selling and administrative expenses, yun naman po yung ating operating expenses. Teka, nagre-record pa ba? Ah, okay. Okay, nagre-record siya. Sorry, na paranoid lang po ako. Okay, so yun po. Uh, variable and fixed expenses po, or selling and administrative expenses to be very concise, yun naman po yung part ng ating operating expenses. Product costs are split into two. Finished goods inventory when unsold and cost of goods sold upon selling. Gano po yung nangyayari sa absorption costing. Di ba po sa cost accounting, kinocompute po natin kung magkano po ang cost ng isang product. Ano pong nilalagay yung product cost sa kanya sa loob ng product na yun? Ano yung kinocompute natin? Your materials, your labor, and overhead, which is both variable and fixed. Okay? That, con uh, that consists of the cost of the products, right? So, when you know na yun na po yung cost na yun, those product costs will be split into two. Lahat po ng hindi pa natin nabibenta, syempre po, yung cost na yon will be part of finished goods inventory at the end of the period. But, kung nabenta na po natin, it will be your cost of goods sold. Basically, and again and again, your absorption costing is the usual way of how you do things in the income statement. Now, let me allow you, uh, allow me to present to you rather, what variable costing is. Uy, sir, ano to? Bakit variable and fixed cost na ang tawag? At ano po yung contribution margin? Uy, medyo bago. Okay, so let me explain that to you bago kayo ma-shock. Paano yung shock? <laughs> Joke lang. Okay, kung paano yung uh, income statement na ganyan ang itsura at bakit hindi na gross profit, bakit hindi na gross margin ang tawag. Okay, so ito po yon. Variable costing is another approach that is also known as the contribution margin approach or the contribution margin income statement. It is used in presenting income information to internal users of accounting information. So, can we present this kind of income statement to the general public or to the external users of accounting information? The answer is no because it is only used in managerial decision making in internal users of accounting information and it is not conforming with the generally accepted accounting principles. You'll know later why. And ito na nga po pala yun. Okay? Direct materials, direct labor, and all variable costs are deducted to sales to determine contribution margin. So, sales minus variable cost, ang tawag po natin sa kanya, contribution margin. Kiko-compare mo po si sales mo po sa variable cost mo po. Okay? 
All fixed costs during the period are deducted against the contribution margin to determine net income. So, kung mapapansin nyo po dito po sa ating variable costing, we are separating costs and expenses not as cost of goods sold and operating expenses by function, but are they variable cost or fixed cost? So, sales minus variable cost will give you your contribution margin and you deduct all of the fixed cost during the production period and that gives you your net income. Ngayon po, sir, ano bang pinagkaiba niyan? Eh, gagawin mo lang naman, pagsasamahin mo si variable cost, pagsasamahin mo na sa mga fixed cost, eh di ba parang pareho lang yun, yun pa rin naman yung net income. Oh wait ka lang, chill ka lang, kaya nga nandito si Sir Chua kasi may, may next slides pa tayo, ituturo ko sa'yo ngayon. Bakit tayo mag absorption costing and bakit tayo gagamit ng variable costing in order for us or for the managers to be able to know if they are really earning or not. So ganito po yun. Okay. Ano po ba itong furious features ng variable costing at why do we have to learn about it? Okay. Number one, costs are identified as variable cost and fixed cost not as COGSNO picks. Okay? Yun po yung isang feature niya. Ang segregation po natin segregation? <laughs> Ang segregation po natin ng cost ay variable cost versus fixed cost hindi po cost of goods sold and operating expenses by function hindi po ganon pang absorption po yon pangalawa fixed manufacturing overhead is treated as a period cost and is charged directly of the entire amount matched against revenues for that period sa variable costing po kasi kung ano ang fixed cost mo during the period, wala nang usap-usap, deduct mo na agad. Kasi, na-incur mo na yun, di ba? And, whatever level of production, 0 or 100,000 units, you still incur that fixed cost, right? So, our thinking in variable costing is that I just have to deduct that in full because whether I produce one or a hundred thousand, I will still incur that. So I have to deduct all of that. Okay? Ganun po yon. Variable costing recognizes that only production costs that vary directly with the volume of production, which is basically your variable cost, shall be treated as product cost because fixed manufacturing overhead shall become a period cost sa variable costing since whatever level of production, gagastusin natin yun na incur po talaga natin yung ating fixed cost. So, diretso muna siyang i-minus. Unlike po kasi sa absorption costing, kung titignan nyo, kung babalik kayo sa konsepto ng absorption costing, the usual thing that you do in cost accounting, ano po ba ang product cost? Materials, labor, variable overhead, pero nilalagyan mo siya ng component ng fixed overhead dahil lang turo nga po sa inyo sa cost accounting kung ano po ang manufacturing overhead whether variable or fixed pa yan papasok mo yan as cost of a product pag nabenta mo na yung produkto part ng cost of goods sold pag hindi pa nabibenta yung produkto finished goods inventory siya ang variable costing po hindi ang fixed manufacturing overhead huy, magproduce ka o hindi you incur that. So, why would you treat that as a product cost when in reality, whether you produce 1, you produce 10, or you produce 100,000, you will be still incurring the same fixed cost. So, I, why are we doing an appropriation of it to product cost when in reality, it's just being incurred in totality whatever or how many units we produce? Parang ganit na galit ako, no? Pero ganun yun. <laughs> okay? So, another thing is that under variable costing po kasi, ang iniiwasan po natin against absorption costing, kaya po nabuo yung ganitong thinking is that fixed overhead cost must not become product cost if in the event an entity has zero production, inventory cost would still amount to the fixed overhead cost itself when in reality, there's no inventory. Uh, ganito po kasi, no? Pag-absorption costing po, di ba? 
may fixed manufacturing cost component ang mga produkto natin dahil sabi nga po ang manufacturing overhead whether variable or fixed yan po ay product cost kasi isipin mo kunyari nakapos ang operations ng company di ba pag nakapos ang operations ng company di walang production pero may fixed cost yun syempre magbabayad ka pa rin ng renta mo dun sa factory facility di ba kung hindi sa yung facility yung factory equipment mo ay uh, nagde-depreciate pa rin so parang nangyayari pag wala tayong pinroduce meron pa rin tayong fixed manufacturing overhead hindi po ba so parang ang dating wala tayong pinroduce pero bakit meron tayong product cost gets nyo o di ba wala naman tayong pinroduce, bakit tayo may product cost as to fix overhead? So parang andating, eh, wag na. Treat na lang natin as period cost yun. Under variable costing, ganun po ang thinking natin. Okay? So I hope dun po sa mga kwento-kwento na sinabi ko, naintindihan nyo na yung pinagkaiba na absorption costing sa variable costing. At ito nga po kasi yun, nilakihan ko na yung font para mas maintindihan nyo. Ito na yun. The main difference between variable costing method and absorption costing method is the treatment of fixed manufacturing overhead. Yun lang. <laughs> o tapos na yung lesson. <laughs> Yun lang po, no? The main difference is how we treat fixed manufacturing overhead. In absorption costing, fixed manufacturing overhead is part of product cost. You know that po, di ba? With that, fixed manufacturing overhead related to unsold products become part of finished goods inventory and will only be charged against revenue at the point of sale. Dahil, excuse me, <laughs> busog, okay. Dahil ang fixed manufacturing overhead ay product cost, part of product cost sa atin pong uh, absorption costing. Ang nangyayari po ngayon, yun nga, katulad na nabanggit ko kanina, pag hindi pa nabibenta ang produkto, asset pa siya, di ba? <laughs> Finished goods inventory siya. Pero pag nabenta yung produkto, dun pa lang siya mamaminos, di ba? Sa revenue as cost of goods sold. So, pag absorption costing, nagkakaroon po tayo ng konseptong tinatawag na deferred fixed overhead. Ibig sabihin, di ba ang, ang, ang concept natin ng fixed overhead, fixed cost ay, yun nga po, whatever happens sa production, mai-incur mo yan eh. Yun nga lang, pag absorption costing, dahil pag hindi pa siya nabebenta, finished goods inventory pa siya, at pag nabenta lang siya imaminos sa income statement, nagiging deferred siya, no? Nagkakaroon ng deferral. Hindi pa siya namaminos ng buo, kahit na-incur mo siya ng buo, in reality, no? In comparison with variable cost, there is a deferred fixed overhead na konsepto ang absorption costing because it is not charged against revenue until products are sold. Now, in variable costing, all fixed manufacturing overhead is charged and matched against sales, thereby all fixed overhead is deducted to sales. There is no deferral of fixed overhead in relation to inventory, thus providing a more precise measurement of income on the premise that whatever level of production and sale, we will still be incurring these fixed overhead costs. Uh, kaya po nabuo ang konsepto ng variable costing is that we need a more precise measurement of income because hello, bakit natin i-asset deferred fixed overhead? Bakit natin i-assetize <laughs> si fixed overhead pag finished goods inventory pa siya? When in reality, whatever happens in our production, we will still incur that fixed manufacturing cost, right? So why will you defer that? Why will you defer it in deduction to revenue? So it becomes a more precise measurement. But it's not, again, I, will, I need to reiterate that variable costing is only used in managerial accounting. It's only being used in internal decision making, managerial decision making. So you should not, or any entity, shall not provide an income statement to the general public or to the external users of accounting information any income statement that is prepared under the variable costing system. Bawal po, no? Absorption po ang ginagamit natin because kung ano po yung sinabi sa GAAP na cost of inventories, yun po ang ilalagay nyo sa income statement. Which is, kasama po doon si fixed manufacturing overhead because as what is being taught to you in cost accounting, fixed manufacturing overhead, manufacturing overhead in itself, is actually a product cost. Okay, so again, absorption costing is GAAP conforming, variable costing is not GAAP conforming, it's only being used inside the entity. Okay, now let me teach you how to compute uh, yung atin pong mga income statements 
using the two methods that I've presented. Let's first talk about absorption costing income statement. Ito po ay isa na na kayo dito, no? Kasi ganito din naman po kayo talaga mag-compute noon pa sa cost accounting pa lang. For your sales, you just have to multiply your unit sold to the selling price. And then your cost of goods sold involves the following. Direct material cost per unit, direct labor cost per unit, variable overhead cost per unit multiplied by your unit sold. Tapos, sa fixed overhead naman po, i-divide mo si fixed overhead syempre sa units produced. ba? Diba? Kasi yun po yung buong production na kakain ng fixed cost. Yun po yung magiging fixed cost per unit mo. ba? Diba? Then, tsaka mo siya i-apply sa number of units sold. Ang cost of goods sold po, syempre ang laman lahat ng product cost na natutunan nyo sa cost accounting. Materials, labor, and overhead, both variable and fixed. That becomes your cost of goods sold which will be deducted to your sales to get your gross profit. Pagdating nyo po ng operating expenses, this is what you do. Variable selling and administrative expenses per unit, dahil variable sa you multiply it to the number of units sold. Tapos, lahat po ng total fixed selling and administrative expenses, syempre, part din po ng operating expenses. Yun po yung minus nyo sa gross profit to get your net income. And again, yan po yung natutunan po ninyo sa inyong accounting classes since first year. Okay? Kung paano po gumawa ng income statement na gaap conforming. Pagdating po natin ngayon sa ating variable costing, ganito na po ang mangyayari. Basic feature niya, variable and fixed cost na po ang categorization ng cost, hindi COGS and OPEX. Ganun pa rin po ang sales, you multiply your unit sold with the selling price. Sa variable cost naman po, edi siyempre, from the word itself, lahat po ng variable cost. You multiply your direct materials, direct labor, and variable overhead cost per unit to the number of units, pero isasama mo na po sa variable cost, si variable selling and administrative expenses per unit multiplied by the unit sold. Okay? Siyempre, variable yan eh. Now, the difference between sales and your variable cost becomes your contribution margin. Other textbooks do it like this. Sales minus variable cost of goods sold is equals to production contribution margin minus variable selling and administrative expenses total contribution margin. Iba pong textbook, ganun. Pero wag na natin paghiwalayin. Ibuo na po natin yung amount ng variable cost to get your total contribution margin. Ito na po yung sinasabi ko sa inyo sa fixed cost. Whatever level of the production, your total fixed cost would still be incurred. So, diretso mo nang i-minus your total fixed manufacturing overhead and your total fixed selling and administrative expenses. Contribution margin minus fixed cost, yun na po ang ating net income. Ngayon, siyempre, baka ang tanong pa rin po sa inyo, magkakaroon po ba ng pagkakaiba yan, sir? E, nilipat lang naman natin yung ibang components ng COGS into variable and fix at saka po yung ibang OPEX variable and fix. So, baka naman po pareho lang yung effect nyan. Pinahirapan mo lang kami. Hindi. Kaya nga meron tayong discussion. ba diba? Okay. So, now, allow me to further enhance your learning by presenting you some problems. And these are the things na favorite nyo sa accounting. Let's try problem number one. Problem number one is our most basic assumption, which is kung ilan yung pinroduce mo on a perfect world, lahat siya nabenta mo. Okay? So, dahil po lahat ng iyong production ay nabenta, wala ka pong ending inventory. This is our problem. Nobita Company makes the Raymond laptop tables. Meron ako nyan. Nandun sa bahay ng tita ko, nilagay ko dun. That sells for 250 pesos each. The company's annual production and sales level is 120,000 laptop tables. So, lahat daw po ng pinroduce nilang 120,000 laptop tables ay naibenta. Wow! 
In addition to the 4,305,000 fixed manufacturing overhead and 1,590,500 fixed administrative expenses, the following per unit costs have been determined for each laptop table. So, binigyan po kayo ng direct materials, which is 60 pesos. Pasahod sa trabahador, 30 pesos per unit. Variable manufacturing overhead is 8 pesos. And variable selling expense is 22 Kung i-interpret natin, ano kaya tong selling expense na 22? Baka yung mga sales agent binibigyan ng 22 pesos na commission kada isang Doraemon table na mabibenta nila. Yung mga ganun. Okay? So, the total variable cost per unit po natin is 120. Ay, sorry. 120 pesos. Okay? Prepare the entity's GAAP income statement, which is your absorption costing income statement, and internal contribution margin income statement, or your variable costing income statement. Uh, wag na po natin pahirapan yung mga sarili natin. Let's just ignore tax effects. Kasi total sa ka naman dun, di ba, yung ini-ignore ka. <laughs> okay. Sige po, sagatan po natin si problem number one. Okay, ganito po ang magiging itsura ng kanyang income statement prepared under GAAP or the Absorption Costing Income Statement. 120,000 po yung nabenta nating laptop tables multiplied by the selling price of 250 which will give you sales of 30 million. Direct materials po natin is 120,000 multiplied by 60 pesos per unit, 7.2 M and then 120,000 times 30, 3.6 M. Variable manufacturing overhead is 8 pesos per unit, which is 960,000. And your fixed manufacturing overhead is 120,000 multiplied by 35.875. Ching! Sir, saan po galing yan 35.875? Ganito po. Ang ating fixed manufacturing overhead, sabi nga po sa inyo, in cost accounting, yan po ay part ng product cost. You incurred 4,305,000 for all of the 120,000 laptop tables that you produced in that period, right? So your 4,305,000 would have to be deducted by the production in this period of 120,000 which is 35.875. Yun po yung ating uh, fixed overhead per unit. You simply multiply it to the number of laptop tables you sold. 4,305,000. Mag-equal talaga yan kasi kung ano yung production mo, yun yung binenta mo. Diba? Okay. Which gives you total cost of goods sold of 16,065,000. You deduct the two and you get your gross profit. Now, for your operating expenses, dun tayo sa selling and administrative expenses. You have variable selling expenses of 120,000. You just multiply it by 22. Ito po yun, 22. 2.64 million. And then your fixed administrative expenses. Ito po yun, yung buong yun, fixed administrative expenses. 1,590,500. Which will give you total operating expenses of 4,230,500. Your net income is 9,704,500. Sanay na kayo dyan kasi ganyan po ang ating income statement and cost accounting. Now, let's now apply your learning in variable costing and this is your variable costing income statement. So this is your contribution margin income statement. This is what happens. Your sales would still be the same. You just multiply 120,000 units sold by 250, which is 30,000. Eh, sorry, 30 million. And then, ganun pa rin naman po sa direct materials, 7.2. Direct labor is 3.6. And then, variable manufacturing overhead is 960,000. Pero dahil po variable cost na po yung pinag-uusapan natin dito at variable costing income statement po ito, ilalagay mo na po dito si variable selling expenses, 120,000 times 22, 2 million. 640,000. Nandito po siya dati sa OPEX, pag variable costing, edi siyempre del variable cost siya, nasa variable cost na po siya ngayon. Okay? Which will give you total variable cost of 14,400,000. And just you deduct the two, and you get a contribution margin of 15,600,000. Now, this is what I'm telling you, that the, uh, the fixed manufacturing overhead will just be deducted in full because at whatever level of production you will still incur that fixed manufacturing overhead which is your total amount of 4,305,000 and then this is your fixed administrative administrative expenses of 590,500 which will give you total fixed cost of 5,895,500 yun din po ang net income 9,704,500 bakit po pareho 
ang net income under absorption costing and variable costing, allow me to present to you some points to consider. Hindi ka sanay dyan dun sa consider kasi hindi ka niya kinoconsider. <laughs> okay, so first point that you need to understand. Number one, when production level is equal to sales level, kung ano daw po yung pen reduce mo na benta mo din, equal lang po ang net income sa absorption costing and variable costing. Bakit? Kasi, when production level is equal to your sales level, wala pong inventory na natitira. Therefore, wala pong magiging fixed manufacturing overhead cost na magiging part ng ending inventory. Sabi nga po natin, hindi ba ang main na difference ng absorption and variable costing is meron po tayong fixed manufacturing overhead na natitira sa ending inventory. In any case, may ending inventory ka. E kaso, ang nangyari, ang production mo ay equal sa sales. So, ibig sabihin, lahat ng fixed overhead mo, na-charge mo na din talaga sa revenue. No? Therefore, there will be no fixed manufacturing overhead cost that will be retained as ending inventory to be deferred next period as a matching to revenues. Wala ka pong fixed manufacturing overhead dahil na benta mo lahat. So, wala kang fixed manufacturing overhead na part ng ending inventory na i-defer mo pa next period. Walang ganon. Parang kayo. Okay. And then, the third one is, when production level is equal to sales level, all costs were released and matched against revenue. All manufacturing costs were charged as cost of goods sold. Wala po tayong problema when production is equal to sale. Your absorption costing income statement and your contribution income statement will just give you the same amount of net income because wala pong magiging deferred fixed cost na part ng ending finished goods inventory. Yun po ang summary nun. Kailangan po natin ng reconciliation? Hindi po kasi pareho lang. O, sana naiintindihan nyo ha. Diretso po tayo sa problem number 2. Production is greater than sales. So, ibig sabihin, ito yung pinroduce mo, kaso, hindi po lahat na benta mo. And we assume in this problem na wala po tayong beginning inventory, pero dahil mas malaki po ang naproduce mo kesa sa nabenta mo, may maiiwan ka pong ending inventory. Nobita Company makes the Raymond laptop tables that sells for $2.50 each. Meron ako niyan nandun sa bahay ng tita ko. <laughs> the company's annual production level is 120,000 laptop tables. Pero ang nabenta lang po ay 100,000. Okay? O di easy mathematics. Ilan ang ending inventory natin and the number of units? 120,000 produce, 100,000 sold, or the 20,000 ending inventory. Ganun pa rin po ang fixed manufacturing overhead at fixed administrative expenses at yung details po natin ng ating variable cost. Prepare the entity's GAAP income statement and internal contribution margin, margin income statement and ire-reconcile po natin si absorption costing net income and variable costing net income para magtagpo sila something na hindi mangyayari sa inyo. Hindi kayo magtatagpo. Okay? Sige, diretso tayo. Okay, let's answer this problem. Ganito po magiging itsura ng ating GAAP income statement under absorption costing. Ganun pa rin, 100,000 nga lang na po siya kasi yan na lang yung nabenta mo. You multiply it by 250, 25 million, no? And then for your cost of goods sold, materials, labor, and variable manufacturing overhead, so 60, 30, and 8 po yun, multiplied by 100,000, so ito po yun. Pasok natin ngayon si fixed manufacturing overhead dahil part po yan ng product cost, under absorption costing, uh, ganito po nangyari. Ang iyo pong production level ay 120,000. So, dyan po applicable yung fixed manufacturing overhead mo na 4,305,000. So, parang ginawa po natin kanina, 4,305,000 divided po by 120,000 na production mo, your fixed cost per unit is 35.875. Yun nga lang, <laughs> anong gagawin mo? You multiply it na lang sa number of units sold na lang, which is 100,000. So, magkakaroon na siya ng variation. Ang fixed manufacturing overhead mo talaga is 4,305,000. Pero, syempre, ang cost of goods sold mo, yun na benta lang. Kaya, sa 100,000 mo lang siya multiply 3,587,500. So, this is your cost of goods sold. Minus nyo lang. Gross profit. 
Tapos, ganun pa rin po, variable selling expenses kung ilan yun na benta mong laptop tables multiplied by 22, ito po yun. Pero yung fixed administrative expenses mo, ba syempre fix na yan, so yan na yun, no? 1,595,500, which will give you a net income under absorption costing of 7,822,000. Okay, paano naman po natin ngayon kukumputin yung ating income statement prepared under variable costing? Charan, ganito po yun. 100,000 multiplied by 250 will just give you again 25 million. Pero, yun nga po, dahil variable costing po ito, lahat po ng variable cost pagsasamasamahin natin. 60, 60. Labor, 30, 30. Overhead na variable, 8, 8. Variable selling expense na 22, 22. Pwedeng yung mismong 120, multiply mo muna sa 100,000 para hindi mo na isa-isahin. 12 million pesos. Okay? Contribution margin is 13 million pesos. Less fixed cost. Ito na, mga kapatid. Yung sinasabi kong pagkakaiba. Sa ating pong absorption costing income statement, Your fixed overhead will only be deducted based on the number of units you sold. However, in the contribution margin income statement in variable costing, this is now in the premise that whether we produce zero or hundred twenty thousand, and whether we only sell one hundred thousand out of the one hundred twenty thousand. We will still incur that fixed manufacturing overhead, right? So why not deduct it in full? Or did it deduct nyan ng buo four million three hundred five thousand? Ganon din po sa ating fixed administrative expenses one five ninety five hundred, which will give you a total fixed cost of five million eight nine five five hundred. Your net income under the variable costing ayon na na iba na seven million one hundred four thousand five hundred. Okay, so now that you know how it works. These are also the points that you need to consider. And again, hindi ka niya kinoconsider kaya hindi ka sanay. <laughs> Joke lang. Okay. When production level is greater than sales level, absorption costing net income is greater than variable costing net income. Tandaan niya yan ha. When production is greater than sales, absorption costing net income is greater than variable costing net income. Bakit? In absorption costing, the fixed manufacturing overhead component of ending inventory is hindi mo pa na minus dahil asset pa siya. Nasa fix, ay sorry, nasa ending finished goods inventory pa po siya. So kung mawapansin yon tinan yon, magkano ang fix overhead natin dito at absorption costing? Three million five hundred thousand plus lang. Dito yung buo, 4,305. So, what do you expect? Mas malaki ang fixed cost mo dito sa absorption kesa dito. Dahil mas malaki ang, ay sorry, mas maliit, ulitin ko, mas maliit ang absorption costing mong fixed cost kesa sa fixed cost mo sa variable costing. So, dahil mas maliit yung cost mo dito kesa sa dito, mas malaki talaga income mo sa absorption kesa sa um, variable. No? Kasi nga po, hin sa absorption costing, hindi mo pa na-deduct lahat ng fixed cost dahil yung fixed cost na nasa ending inventory, asset pa. Hindi pa cost of goods sold. Unlike po dito sa contribution margin income statement sa variable costing, as in, yun eh, yun na talaga eh, lahat ng fixed overhead na minus na talaga. So, mas malaki yung minus mo sa variable costing, so mas, mal mas maliit talaga yung magiging ano niya, net income. Okay. In variable costing, all fixed manufacturing overhead have been deducted to obtain net income. Kaya po ang nangyayari, mas malaki po talaga yung net income natin sa absorption costing kesa po sa variable costing. Okay. To further understand how it works, ganito po. Magkano po ngayon yung fixed manufacturing overhead component na nandun sa loob ng 20,000 laptop tables na hindi pa natin nabibenta? So you just have to multiply twenty thousand laptop tables by thirty-five point eight seven five. That gives you fixed manufacturing overhead na nandun sa loob ng cost of ending inventory seven hundred seventeen thousand five hundred. Let's now reconcile something that hindi mangyari sa inyo. Reconciliation. Joke lang. Okay. So your absorption costing net income is seven million eight hundred twenty-two thousand. With the thinking 
about variable costing net income ganito. Absorption costing net income ako. Gusto kong mapunta sa variable costing net income. E di ba sa variable costing net income, lahat ng fixed costs may na minus na dun. So, ang gagawin ko, yung fixed cost na nandun sa ending inventory ko, ma-minus ko sa absorption costing net income para ang makuha ko yung variable costing net income. So, 7822 minus 717,500, yun na po yung variable costing net income mo. O, di ba magic? O, ganun na siya. Okay. O, ngayon naman, balik na natin yung reconciliation mo. Yung variable costing net income ko, 7,104,500. Papunta ako ng absorption costing. Ganto thinking mo. E di ba pag absorption costing, hindi pa dapat natin minamainos yung fixed overhead na kasama nung ending inventory? Kasi asset pa yun eh. Diba? Naka-asset pa siya, hindi pa siya nagiging cost of goods sold. So, gagawin ko, dahil hindi pa dapat siya i-minus, i-add ko. <laughs> i-add ko yung fixed cost component na yun. So, 7,104,500 plus 717,500, makakarating ka naman absorption costing net income na 7,822. Okay. So, pagka medyo mabilisan yung computation nyo sa exam, even if you don't separately prepare the absorption to variable, compute mo lang yung isa, tapos kung alam mo tong konsepto na to, alam mo na rin yung isa. Okay? So, kahit yung absorption costing lang yung gawin mo, tapos adjust mo na lang based sa fixed manufacturing overhead na part ng ending inventory, tapos tinuro ko naman sa inyo yung konsepto kung kailan i-minus or i-add, o yun na yun, alam nyo na rin yung isa. Kahit hindi na kayo gumawa ng isa pang income statement para hindi sayang sa oras kung exam ang pag-uusapan. Okay? So, I hope na naintindihan nyo na kung paano po tayo mag-reconcile ng ating absorption going variable or variable going absorption. Hirapan natin ng konti. Let's have problem number 3. Sa ating naman pong problem number 3 ay mas maliit naman po yung production kesa sa sale. Paano nangyari yun? Kasi may beginning inventory ka. Okay? So may beginning inventory ka tapos hirapan pa natin ng konti may natira ka pa uling ending inventory. Nabita Company makes the Raymond laptop tables that sells for $250 each. May ganyan na akong table nandun sa bayan ng tita ko. <laughs> the company is... An- ano ba yun? Aray ko. The company's annual production level is 120,000 laptop tables. There were 50,000 unsold laptop tables from last year. Ngayon, sa problem na to, medyo huwag natin pahirapan. Let's just assume na dahil ang annual production level nga po nila is 120,000 kada taon. So, parang ang dating, yung fixed cost din nila kada taon is naka-fix talagang 4,305,000. So, yung 50,000 na beginning inventory mo dito, yun din ang laman niyang fixed overhead. Yung 35.875 natin kanina. Para hindi na tayo mahirapan mag-isip. Okay? Now, unsold laptop tables from last year is 50,000 and then your current production is still 120,000. So, total number of units available for sale is now 170,000. 140,000 daw po yung nabenta. Ito yung sinasabi ko na your production is lesser than sales kasi may beginning inventory ka na. So, your production is 120,000 pero nabenta mo uh, 140,000 na. So, kung quick thinking ulit tayo ng inventory, Beginning inventory is 50, you produce 120, total number of units available for sale, 170, minus 140, ending inventory natin, 30,000. Okay, kasi kailangan natin yung mamaya. Ganun pa rin po ang fixed manufacturing overhead, fixed administrative expenses, at yung ating variable cost per unit. We prepare the entity's GAAP income statement and contribution margin income statement and magre-reconcile pa rin po tayo and again, something na hindi mangyayari sa inyo. <laughs> Joke lang. Okay, so ganito po. Ganun pa rin po ang pagpe-prepare natin ng income statement. Number of units sold in this problem, syempre 140,000 na po. Times 250, 35 million. And then, 140,000 laptops multiplied by the following. 60 pesos per unit na materials, 30 pesos per unit na labor, 8 pesos per unit na variable manufacturing overhead. And we use the 35.875 pa din. No? Um, ganito po kasi talaga dapat yan. Uh, 4,305,000 divided by 120,000 for this period lang. Pero, merong ibang amount na 
laman yung 50,000 na unsold laptop. So kung ganun ang problem nyo, kailangan yung magkaiba pa rin yung computation. Yan yan, ang pinadali ko dito sa problem na to, in, in the assumption na ang laman din ng 50,000 unsold laptops last year is still yung 35.875 because ang thinking natin is dahil 120,000 laptop tables lang din naman po talaga yun na po produce nila every year. 4,305,000 lang din lagi yung fixed manufacturing overhead. no? So, kumbaga, hindi nagbabago, talagang ang kanilang fixed manufacturing overhead per unit, 35.875. Okay? Pero kung yung dadalin mong 50,000 this period ay iba ang laman ng fixed manufacturing overhead, may splitting ka pa dyan na gagawin. Dapat, ang i-assign mong cost of goods sold sa mabibentang 50,000, yung fixed overhead niya nung time na yon. Tapos yung para sa production na to, yung para sa production na to na fixed cost. So parang meron siyang concept ng first in first out din. Parang ganun, no. Si split mo kasi ng maayos yung tamang fixed cost component niya. Pero let's just assume na all throughout the production process, next year, previous year, this year, 35.875 talaga. Para hindi na tayo malito. So 140,000 times 35.875, yun pa rin po, no. So, this is your total cost of goods sold, then gross profit. Okay? Then, you multiply 140,000 that you sold times 22, and then your fixed administrative expenses. You get a net income of 11,587,000. How do we do it in variable costing? 140,000 times 250, ganun pa rin po yun. And then, 60, 38, and 22 na variable cost, which is 120. You multiply it by 140,000. Your total variable cost is 16,800,000. Check ko lang sa CalQ. So, 120 pesos po per unit yung variable cost times 140,000 yung unit sold. It is indeed 16,800,000. Your contribution margin is now 18,200,000. And ganito nga po, ulitin ko lang sa variable costing kung ano po ang fixed cost this period, this period lang ha, yun po ang i-minus natin sa fixed cost. 4,305,159,500. Hindi mo po i-minus yung fixed cost from ending inventory last year ha, kasi na-minus na yun last year sa variable costing income statement last year. So, ibig sabihin, kung ano lang yung na-incur natin na fixed manufacturing overhead, yun lang ima-minus mo. Okay? Your net income is 12,304,500. Oo, oh, mas malaki na siya. Interpret natin ngayon kung bakit sa ating points to consider. When your production level naman po ay mas maliit sa sales level, absorption costing net income will now be lesser than the variable costing net income. Why? In absorption costing, the fixed manufacturing overhead component of beginning inventory is now deducted to the current period to obtain net income. Ang nangyayari po kasi ngayon sa absorption costing, ima-minus mo sa kanya yung talagang fixed cost this period na 4,305,000. Sana yun lang. Eh kaso meron ka pang beginning inventory na nabenta na this period mo palang maima-minus as cost of goods sold. Kasi ganun nga sa absorption costing. Kung kailan siya mabenta, dun lang siya magiging cost of goods sold, hindi po ba? So, hindi na lang 4,305,000 yung fixed cost mo. Kasama na rin yung fixed cost component ng beginning inventory mo. So, ang nangyayari, mas malaki na ngayon yung cost mo sa absorption costing kesa sa variable costing. Kaya mas maliit na yung net income mo sa absorption costing kesa sa variable costing. Okay? In variable costing, kung ano lang yung fixed cost natin this period, yung ima-minus natin. So, ang nangyayari, ay yung fixed cost natin sa this period sa variable costing, yun lang ima-minus mo. So, mas maliit yung fixed cost mo ngayon dito. Kaya yung net income mo under variable costing, mas malaki na siya. With these, absorption costing net income will be lesser than variable costing net income. Ngayon po, we try now to reconcile. We have two things that we need to consider. First thing to consider, fixed manufacturing overhead component ng beginning inventory, which is 50,000 beginning inventory of laptop tables multiplied by the fixed cost component, which is 35.875, 1,793,750. Number two, 
fixed manufacturing overhead component of ending inventory, which is 30,000 laptop tables. Paano nga po ulit nakuha yan? 50,000 plus 120,000 production, 170,000 available for sale, less na benta na 1 uh, 140,000 170 minus 140 30,000 30,000 times 35.875 1 million 76 250 Paano natin siya i-reconcile? Charan! Ayan, medyo may variation ha? Medyo may hindi ba mahirap pero may concept lang tayong kailangang paganahin Ang absorption costing net income ko ay 11,587,000 Paano ko siya papupuntahin bilang variable costing? Ganito po ang sistema Kapag po variable costing, sabi natin kung ano lang yung fixed cost this period, di ba? Okay? So, mangyayari kung variable costing net income yung iniisip ko, bakit ko i-add ngayon si fixed manufacturing overhead component ng beginning inventory? Kasi po, hindi yan minaminus under variable costing, di ba? So, i-add natin. Hindi siya dapat maminus dun eh. Kaso, Ima-minus na po natin si fixed manufacturing overhead ng ending inventory kasi po, ano nangyayari? Kung papunta ka ng variable costing net income, yung 30,000 laptop tables mo uh, times 35,875, sa absorption costing asset pa yan. Pero sa variable costing, kailangan i-minus mo na yan. Kasi nga po, lahat ng fixed cost ay minaminus na natin sa variable costing net income. Ulitin ko ha. Ina-add po natin si beginning inventory pap kung variable costing net income na yung pag-uusapan natin kasi ang minaminus lang naman po natin sa variable costing net uh, income statement is yung fixed cost today. Eh yung beginning inventory pang previous period yan eh, add mo na. Hindi yan relative sa period na to eh. Diba? Tapos, going to variable costing net income, bakit natin i-deduct yung pang-ending inventory? Kasi, dapat po, itong mismong fixed cost na to, na i-minus na talaga dapat lahat ng fixed cost. So, i-minus ko rin yung nasa ending inventory na fixed cost. So, ang gagawin natin, absorption costing net income plus fixed cost or fixed manufacturing overhead cost in beginning inventory minus fixed manufacturing overhead in ending inventory yun po ang variable costing net income mo 12 million 304500 balik tarin naman natin ang analysis galing tayo ng variable costing net income papupuntahin natin ang absorption costing net income idededak mo naman daw po ngayon si fixed manufacturing overhead of beginning inventory Bakit? Papunta ka ng absorption costing net income. Eh hindi ba po, pag absorption costing net income, yung 50,000 mong beginning inventory at yung fixed cost component niya, magiging cost of goods sold na under absorption costing net income. Dahil cost of goods sold to under absorption costing, kailangan mong i-deduct. Pero, i-add mo si fixed manufacturing overhead ng ending inventory kasi under absorption costing, yan po ay asset pa. Ending inventory pa siya. Dahil asset pa siya, hindi pa siya dapat i-minus. Kaya, i -re -re mo pa balik. So, magiging uh, variable costing net income which is 12,304,500 minus fixed manufacturing overhead in beginning inventory plus fixed manufacturing overhead in ending inventory that is your absorption costing net income. So, ganun po ang ating magiging reconciliation pag may beginning and ending inventory. Okay, so just some quick notes para mas maintindihan nyo na ng buo yung ating lesson. No? Absorption costing income statement follows GAAP. Cost of goods sold includes lahat po ng product cost which is your materials, labor, and overhead both variable and fixed. And then, operating expenses include all variable and fixed selling and administrative expenses. Variable costing income statement is for internal use. Costs will now be categorized as variable and fixed. Pero, fixed manufacturing overhead are deducted and matched against revenue diretso. Hindi ka po magkakaroon ng splitting kung ano pa po yung component na yun na cost of goods sold na at ano yung component na ending inventory. Lahat po ng fixed cost, derecho, deduct. Okay? The main difference between absorption costing and variable costing is the treatment of fixed manufacturing overhead cost at kung may naiiwan po bang fixed manufacturing overhead cost o wala. Kung may ending inventory tayo 
or hindi. Okay? Pero, diretso, pag variable costing, kung ano fix cost mo, yun na yun, minus mo na. Okay, so again, ang ating pong absorption costing income statement is how you do it. Sales minus cost of goods sold, gross profit is operating expenses net income. For variable costing naman po, naka-split into variable and fixed cost. Sales minus variable cost, CM minus fixed cost net income. Ito pong variable costing na ito ay pakatandaan nyo na kasi next lesson, kailangan pa rin po natin siya. If production po is equal to sale, ang ating pong absorption costing net income ay equal lang po sa variable costing net income dahil lahat po ng fixed cost ay fully accounted whether absorption or variable costing dahil lahat ng pinroduce mo ay nabenta. Ibig sabihin, lahat ng fixed cost component mo naging cost of goods sold. If production is greater than sales, Absorption costing net income is greater than variable costing net income. Bakit po? Kapag ka po mas malaki ang production, may naiiwang ending inventory. Yung ending inventory na yon, may component siya ng fixed manufacturing cost na hindi mo agad minaminus sa revenue, kaya yung absorption costing net income mo mas malaki. Kasi mas konti yung minaminus mong cost. Unlike sa variable costing net income, talagang lahat ng fixed cost minus mo na. If production naman po is lesser than sales, ang atin pong net income sa absorption costing mas magiging maliit kesa sa variable costing. Kasi sa absorption costing, minaminus mo po bukod sa fixed cost this period, pati yung fixed cost ng beginning inventory mo na naging cost of goods sold, minus mo na. Kaya mas maliit net income mo. Unlike sa variable costing net income, or income statement, rather, yung fixed cost mo doon kung ano lang yung this period. Okay? Kaya mas malaki net income niya kasi mas maliit cost mo doon. Okay. Ito po yung dalawang reconciliation natin gagawin ha. Pag galing ka po ng absorption costing net income, papunta ng variable cost, syempre ang mindset mo, variable cost. Ia-add ko si fixed cost na beginning inventory kasi... Uh, hindi ko naman po yan fixed cost this period pero minus ko si fixed cost at ending inventory kasi talagang ngayon ko yan fixed cost na hindi minus ni absorption costing so dapat minus ko under variable costing kasi dapat nga po lahat ng fixed cost minus ko pag variable costing kung galing naman po ako ng variable costing net income minus ko si fixed cost in beginning inventory kasi sa absorption costing minus po talaga natin yung fixed cost at beginning inventory dahil cost of goods sold na siya. Yun nga lang, ang konsepto natin kapag ka absorption costing na income statement, yung ending inventory sa fixed cost natin, asset pa yan eh. So, hindi yan dapat i-deduct sa net income natin, i -re -read natin para makarating tayo sa absorption costing net income. Okay? So, dapat intindihin nyo yung mga rational na yon kung bakit may add, subtract, subtract, add. Pag naintindihan nyo na po yung mga konsepto ngayon, tsaka lang kayo pwedeng magkabisote style na absorption plus beginning minus ending variable. Variable minus beginning plus ending absorption. Pwedeng ganun, pero dapat naintindihan nyo kung bakit. Okay? And this has been our discussion for absorption costing versus variable costing. And our next lesson is a continuation of your concepts of variable costing and we will now be applying it in cost volume profit analysis or your CVP analysis. Again, please like, share, and subscribe to search Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and hit the notification bell button. Comment down your questions, suggestions, and reactions. And again, thank you very much po sa inyong support sa search Chua's Accounting Lessons PH. Thank you po sa ating 30,000 subscribers na patuloy na nagtitiwala ng inyong online accounting lessons sa search Chua's Accounting Lessons PH. This has been search Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and to God be all the glory, honor, and praise. Thank you and have a great day and thank you for being with us today. Ham ka jisinyo. Robin, kumasmila.